Buddy McGirt back in the ring. Said he rose too quick. McGirt, a good boxer though. Said if he had him back in the ring again, stay on top of him. Well, Baltazar showing that uh, the long climb back up. He's won seven of the last eight, but uh, now just cracked the top 30 in the world rankings, uh, number 27 in the WBC. And uh, Pedro Laza, who also uh, making uh, somewhat of a comeback, he's won his last three fights after being out for about four years. And uh, as you can see, not exactly in tip top shape is Laza. Really some extra pounds uh, around the stomach. He's looking for his 30th win. He is a master technician in the ring. And there's no question about that. And he's going to try to frustrate uh, Baltazar, uh, to take him the distance and uh, win in a decision. And he hasn't fought in almost four months. But he says he was supposed to fight on the Cooney former undercard. The fight that he was supposed to be in was canceled, though. That was uh, back January 15th. Laza lost his first pro fight, then he won 22 straight. Most notable, a second round knockout over Anthony Collins back in 1981. Collins then undefeated and a, considered a pretty good prospect. In February of 83, Laza was uh, stopped in the night by Cornelius Boza Edwards. The fight he took on short notice uh, was on network uh, television, got that exposure. And he was essentially stride for stride with uh, Boza Edwards uh, for eight rounds and got caught in the night he says that uh, he says that he beat him seven out of eight rounds then he got caught with the right hook he got cut over the right eye in that fight i'm talking about pedro Lasso with the right strike i was inter interested to see what trunks tony the tiger would wear remember when he fought james birdie mcgurt he had all tiger stripes this time he's just got the tiger stripes seconds to go in the first round. Baltazar was undefeated in his first 24 fights before he met Howard Davis. Knocked Davis down three times uh, before Baltazar lost a 10-round decision and also was stopped at nine by Robin Blake. Came back with a 10-round victory over Roger Mayweather. This is the end of the first round. The Bills twice as big. In that first round, Al Munoz, the referee, called this a slip. It was actually a punch that knocked Pedro Lasa to the canvas. All the way back. Huh. He robbed him. Uh, Al Munoz robbed him of one knockdown punch. Anytime you punch a guy with your hands and it knocks him down on the ground, anything except the bottom of his feet, the, the canvas is a knockdown. This is a matchup of the slugger, Baltazar, against uh, Plaza, who is a definitely all defensive team. And right now, Baltazar tied up by Laza. Laza was the national champion in Cuba, an amateur at that time, a lightweight champion. And uh, he came over to Miami in 1980 as part of the Mario Boatlift. And the story there that being a champion, a boxer, sell a celebrity in, in Cuba, there's no way he would have been able to get on the boat to be recognized. They'd left, never let him escape. So he disguised himself. So he put powder on his head, wore a cape, hunched over, walked, bent over, looked like an old man. And that's how he, he uh, got over to the United States. Baltazar is using that right hand more in this fight. As I'd mentioned in the open, he's been working on that with his trainer. And he's thrown it here in this uh, second round. After watching the first fight tonight, you realize more than ever that in the boxing ring, anything could happen. A remarkable turnaround. Vincent Boulware winning the first eight rounds and leading probably in the ninth against Tony Harrison. And then taking a combination from Harrison and Boulware unable to beat the count. We were already retiring Harrison. And he's now looking for a world title shot. It's the exciting thing about a puncher. Now here, Lawson needs to get that left hand moving. He's got Baltazar posing with him. When he sets down, Baltazar poses with him now. Right here's the time to get that left jab moving. Even Tony Baltazar. He talked about his three-inch reach deficit. He can still get that uh, left jab moving. And if he faints it, send it up to the right hand. And Lazarus snaps back 
over the couple of laps. 30 seconds to go in the second. Maz a smart fighter. Baltazar certainly cannot fear his punches, although Laza has 11 knockouts in 29 fights, uh, but certainly not known for punching ability. For our local cable systems, we'll pause now for these messages. You're watching USA's Thursday Night Fights. And I'll show you. I'll show you. I was ready to explode, and Mom was so worried. I was mad at first, but I am so lucky that she made that call. The people at Charter, they got us talking again. If you don't get help at Charter Hospital of Corona, please, get help somewhere. In 1967, the Chevy Camaro was born. By 1973, it was America's favorite muscle car. By 1980, its performance made it a winner. Today, your Chevy dealer will help you own the 1990 Camaro with the best Camaro deal in history. And we'll add to that deal $1,000 factory cash. History-making Camaro deals right now at your Southern California Chevrolet and Geo dealers. Tony Baltazar, the age of 29, comes out for round number three against Pedro Laza. Baltazar with 33 victories against three defeats and a draw. His losses at the hands of Howard Davis, Robin Blake, and Buddy McGurk. Laza, 29-5. We talked a lot about Tony Baltazar being a left-hander, but he rocks his box his right hand now. Nice combination, the right hand that he's been working on did some damage. He's got Pedro Laza stepping in post -over. the left, tries to load up again on it. All the punch is that left because he's left-handed. There's the left again, and it moves Laza back a few steps. Doubles up on the left. And that is his favorite punch, the double left hook. You throw one to the body, you bring your opponent's hands down, then you come over the top. Now Lassa showing us that he has the double left hook. Game warrior, Pedro Lassa. Perhaps to the head of Baltazar. Baltazar is still there. Get up, says Al Munoz. He scored well to the body, especially with that left hook. Baltazar is trying to score there around behind that rib. If he hit a guy on that on that uh, elbow, you're going to feel some pain. And Hauser is down. Four, five, Quickly six, up for more. You can see seven, the damage already eight, on the right side of uh, Lazo's face. Lazo comes back firing. But Baltazar just showing his strength, moving Laza back with every shot. And right now, Laza needs to do one of two things. He needs to either tie up and try to make it through the round or get those hands moving. The best defense is a good offense. Al Munez calls a timeout. And there is a cut over the right eye the doctor, get your of Pedro Laza. Bringing the doctor into the ring. Doctor says, bring him over on this corner. And now they get the other doctor. He's not bothering his vision now, but he can't go home. Okay, son, this is it, okay? If he cuts anymore, we're going to have to stop it. You ready? Time, let's go! Well, you heard it right from the horse's mouth. Maza has to go for it all. And we're only in the third round. Now, if you're in a big fight like this, I would rather, as a boxer, and if I were cut, I would rather have my corner have a chance to work on that cut. Oh, oh a big left, Baltazar. Another one. Referee looking in. Laza walks into another left. 
Now you're saying Lazo should just try to survive, just box, keep away, and get into the corner to have the work done on the eye. Or get real aggressive, start throwing punches. He's got to do something to change the pace of this fight. Balthazar or new. He had Pedro Lazo in trouble. beyond the third. Well, it was a second opinion from the doctor in this corner and said that was enough, and he probably did uh, Pedro Lazo a favor. Tony Valdezar comes up with a TKO over Pedro Lazo. It was all Valdezar who wins for the 34th time in his career.